After months and months of work on the boat, we were finally feeling like we were getting somewhere. Most of the welding in the cockpit was done, and we had just one more thing to move. But as you're about to see, our timeline was about to be substantially lengthened again. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned, and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat, even stronger than she was before. And we're bringing you along with us. So we're just about to head about an hour and a half south of us to go pick up a bunch of contaminated diesel to filter and use for heat in the shop because we haven't had heat in a little while now and as you guys have seen it's been snowy and we need to start painting again. Gordon and Linda who are two patrons and two friends of ours offered to give us this contaminated diesel out of a boat that they're scrapping so we're gonna rig up some kind of fancy pumping system and go down and grab all this fuel out of the boat. <laughs> so it should be an interesting adventure, that's for sure. Logan's got it figured out as he usually does with his magical mechanical skills. And we just gotta go grab the stuff to turn this into a real project. So let's get going. Hey there, Internet. Uh, my name's Gord, and my spouse Linda is here as well. We have a She's steel, sail, steel sailboat named Mystic Raven. So uh, we got to know uh, Karen and Logan a little bit through, through boating. Uh, what we're doing here, we've got this old wooden boat, and this, uh, this boat was actually an old boat that was built by the RCMP for Expo 67. And unfortunately, it's, uh, there's a little too much gone in this boat for it to be fixed, so we hauled it out a few years ago. And when we hauled it out, it had quite a lot of fuel left in it. And it's just been sitting there aging like fine wine for a few years. So the, uh, when we saw that Taryn and Logan were looking for some fuel to help out with the work on their boat, we uh, kind of, it's a pretty good match. We get to get rid of this fuel and these guys, these guys get to eat their shop. So it seemed like a, like a match made in heaven. Yeah, symbiotic relationship. Yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, yeah, Logan's got a pretty, a pretty impressive uh, jerry rig going on here to, uh, to pump the fuel up. And we're hoping that there's something like between 200, and 200 or so liters in it. So hopefully that'll heat the shop for a while. Yeah, no doubt. Thank you guys. All right. Well, we got all of our fuel back to the shed. I don't even think we really need to filter it. You don't think so? No, I think we'll just dump them in because we pulled all the fuel through a Raycor filter, an existing Raycor filter that was on the boat. How much did we end up with? The pails weren't exactly clean, but yeah. we ended up with, I think Two, there's seven four, and a six, half eight. Okay. pails, ish. Like we didn't overfill them or anything like that. So should be okay. We'll pour some in and get some heat going today because it is less than ideal. Yeah, it's at like hovering around one degree. Yeah, so it's rainy. Celsius, so it snows a little bit and rains at the same time. It is raining and snowing and doesn't know what it's doing. <laughs> nice song. Thank you. It about sums up what's happening, I'd say. Yeah. So do you hear that annoying background noise there right now? Do you hear that? That fan running? That's the heater! We've got heat again! So thanks again to Gord and Linda for hooking us up with that, that fuel out of that boat because it's going to keep us warm for quite a few days. Which is awesome because, like we just showed you, the weather can't make up its mind. And it's cold. So. Also, I wanted to point out again that the heating situation that we have here is definitely not ideal. It's not up to code in any way, shape, or form, and it is potentially very dangerous, especially if we didn't have it vented properly. We don't leave it unattended, we have it well vented out the side, and we make sure that what's burning is also not coming back in here. But in no way, shape, or form are we recommending that anybody else does this. Now, today we're going to cut the drain out and um, move it. The issue with the drain is that the angle that it's at means that it rubs on the steering arm and that's bad for two reasons. One, because it wears the steering arm and two, 
because that means that it also rubs through the drain. And it also like catches and it's sticky and it's just, it's not ideal. So we're gonna change the angle of that. We're not taking the drain out, we're just changing the angle of the drain. Oh, it's blowing heat now instead of just burning stuff. And then once we're done that, that's one big issue solved. But in reality, things were far from being that simple. This right here, that's the drain. And then that is where the arm is usually attached. And it goes through there, rubs on there. So this has all got to be changed. And you're Even taking... the bottom of this bulkhead is in really rough shape. So yeah. True. I think we might end up... We're going to have to replace some of this. Some of the bulkhead? Yeah. I can put a screwdriver through it. Oh yeah. So this bulkhead right here, it's all wood. And there's been pretty bad condensation issues down at the bottom here. So that's what Logan's talking about probably needing to replace. That's what we're doing. Ah! My hand! The craw! Hello! Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to get this out of here, but it just breaks off because it's so rotten, but hmm. it's got to come out. All right, so let me explain what just happened here because it's kind of confusing. We said we were coming in here to replace a drain and now we've got a whole bulkhead out. The bulkhead at the aft end of the aft cabin is made of wood. It's not steel. And because they didn't have everything properly insulated, there was um, a moisture issue and it turns out that the wooden bulkhead actually kind of <laughs> rotted a bit. And Logan needed to remove part of the bulkhead in order to change where the drain is, so he just decided to pull the whole thing off because he went to move it and remove it, and the screwdriver just went right through the wood. It pretty much just turned to dust. So obviously there's an issue with moisture. So he decided to pull the whole thing off <coughs> and found more rust. Go figure. Because there's like two portions of steel bulkhead that the wood bulkhead was up against, and the bottom one... The moisture, I guess, was just held right up against the steel, and we've got rust issues there now, so... It's not really unexpected, it's just kind of annoying, especially because we kind of forgot about this. <laughs> we, did, we we kind of forgot we had to do this, so... Now we've got to take more of the aft cabin apart. We've got to take, like, the pieces of plywood out that are the bed, because we can't get to the rest of that piece of plywood to take it out and check it. Like, I know the hull of the boat is in good shape. Um, because you can open up these little the cubbies. cubbies and reach in there and look. Well, I don't. It's not in good shape, but it's it's okay. It we're not replacing any of it so far, but we have to redesign this bulkhead basically so that it's not on the bare metal because condensation. When it's warm in the boat and it's not necessarily warm up against that bulkhead, the steel part of it. Yeah, we get condensation. When we put this all back together, we'll redesign this so that it's insulated and there's no wood directly on the steel.
didn't even paint it. I'm sure they did, but... Uh, yeah, it was all painted. But... So we need to get air hammer in here. on the bottom of a piece of wood <laughs> and as you can see it was just like layers and layers of paint focus there we go it rusted underneath them there wasn't a proper drain from the aft locker so the water must have kind of just accumulated underneath there I think there's like an actual here somewhere, maybe? But it just drained into the wood then. Yeah. Yeah, we need to get the chisel in here and chisel. I'm going to cut this bulk head out. So you can see as well that that bulk head bulkhead Logan is reefing on and that goes into the other locker on the other side of that that other bulkhead and because of what we found here with the rust we're gonna have to pull the floor out of that um, locker as well and check it to make sure it's not rotting I don't know where this water is coming from that's kind of concerning. Pretty smelly. Smells like a swamp. Like I hope we don't have a hole. Quite the mess. definitely doesn't look nearly as bad. No, looks pretty good actually. I mean, right here doesn't look great. That's not surprising. And there still is whatever this is. I don't know what that's glue or rust or what. It's rust. Oh, Not nearly as bad. But what I wanted to get at was down in here. Because that does not look good. No? That looks really, really bad. all back to have a really good look at it. though uh it's not as bad as it initially looks like when you like
like, you know how bad it looked when we first started chiseling this out. Oh yeah, it looked worse than the ball works. Look at that. It's almost like a paste was created with the wood and the rust and it just like... But even down here, I, you know, it's not great, but I don't think it's bad enough that we're going to have to replace it. Well, that's exciting. Like, it's pretty pitted here. Like, there's just these random areas that the pitting is worse. But not too bad, you don't think? Not too, too bad. I have to take this piece of wood out, though, because the rust goes up behind it. I thought that might happen. Yeah, which is fine, but... Just we'll annoying. It's really hard to get in here on an angle, because when you're working with a needle gun on an angle, only the ones that are on the bottom are touching anything and they don't really dig. Yeah. And like, this thing has like a plate that the needle's all butt up against yeah. or attached to. And it's not angled. And then the hammer hits that plate. So if it's on an angle like this, the hammer hits the plate on an angle and doesn't give it any, like, doesn't do a whole lot of anything. With the turku, be able to get in there and do it? I, I don't think so. think so. And like, as a comparison, that's blasted steel. Like that's white metal. When you look at the pitting. Hard to see. It's like maybe a millimeter. Yeah, it's really hard to see. This, so that's also a very good sign. Yeah, it's not bad though. Wow, that's longer than I thought it was. Woo! Nice. Two hoses down. That one's full of stuff. Just that one is getting moved. So we started this morning by trying to cut this cockpit drain out of here. So we had a little bit of woodwork to remove. Then we found some rot, and then we found a lot of rust, so we removed the bulkhead. Because it was, the bottom couple inches was rotten. Wood pieces glued to the hull, like into the bilge. And the floor sat on those. And uh, we always had a really bad condensation issue at the back corner here, where the, pretty much where the wood touches the hull. We removed all that and those blocks that were glued to the hull were blocking the limber holes so the water couldn't drain out of this <laughs> aft locker area. Pretty much couldn't get, had no drainage. Well it drained into the wood is what it did. And the wood just held the water and rotted. But there's also these really hard to get places in here that we could never access because there was a bulkhead here. Mm -hmm. So now that that's gone, we're really able to get in here. We got a bunch of rust to chip away at and see how bad it is. But um, as you can see, like there's, there's quite a bit, but luckily for us, it looked worse than it was. It's not great. There's a doubler welded on the bottom. So basically just another piece of steel welded over the the hull to thicken it up to strengthen a certain area and there's a doubler plate well you can see the shape of it right there that's the weld and it just strengthens this whole area where the skag is attached and where the rudder shaft goes through it's on honestly it's not big enough the doubler and then there was some more plates welded on afterwards so not great I thought they were there to patch holes but it doesn't look like we have a hole anywhere so that's always positive so you think it's just there to strengthen it not to patch a hole yeah because there's a lot of force in this area right and um, four mil is pretty pretty thin steel so we didn't actually get to the drain today, obviously, but the hose is off of it. We got more chiseling to do, and then we got to keep prepping stuff to be ready to be repainted. 
Luckily it doesn't look like we're gonna have to weld any plates on. But all that will be in the next video next week. So thanks for sticking with us and uh, this is setting us back a little bit but probably not a ton as far as time goes for getting back in the water. And better to find this now than when we're on the water and we find a hole or something. So yeah, see you guys next week. If you're strapped into this roller coaster with us, make sure to tune in next week when things go from bad to worse. And an extra shout out to our patrons for all the extra encouragement you've thrown our way through this mess. See you next week. <laughs>